Hi, welcome to Spotlight TV. I'm your host, David. In this episode, we turn our spotlight onto a country artist who is widely considered to be one of the greatest country singers who ever lived, influencing George Jones, Willie Nelson, Roy Orbison, the Everly Brothers, Keith Whitley, Merle Haggard, Randy Travis, and John Fogarty, among many others. Before we begin, please hit the like, subscribe, and bell icons so you don't miss a single one of our videos. Lefty Frizzell was a vocalist who set the style of singing, quote, the country way, end quote, for the generations that followed. Frizzell became one of the most successful and influential artist of country music throughout his career. He smoothed out the rough edges of a honky-tonk song by sounding out syllables longer and singing longer. Because of this, his music became much more mainstream without losing its honky-tonk attitude and persona. He was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1982. After the death of Hank Williams in 1953, Brazil released many songs that charted in the top ten of the Hot Country Songs chart. William Orville Frizzell was born on March 31, 1928. He was the son of an oil man, the first of eight children, in Corsicana in Navarro County in northern Texas. During his childhood, his family moved to El Dorado in Union County in South Arkansas. As a child, he was called Sonny, but later took the name Lefty. It was believed they called him Lefty because he had won a neighborhood fight. However, it turned out that this tale was part of a fake publicity stunt set up by his label. Frizzell's largest influence included the blue yodeler Jimmy Rogers. He began listening to Rogers as a boy. Now, he began singing professionally before he was even in his teens even earning a spot on the local radio station, KELD El Dorado. He spent his teens singing in nightclubs and radio and talent shows throughout the South. During his tour of Arkansas, Texas, New Mexico, and Las Vegas, he began to develop a style of his own, shaped by artists like Rogers, Ernest Tubb, and Ted Daffin. In 1947, the 19-year-old Frizzell was arrested for having sex with an underaged fan. He had been married only a year and filled with guilt. He wrote poems to his wife from his cell. One of them would become his first big record. After his release in late 1949, he was led away from music and back to the old fields with his father. However, soon he was performing in nightclubs again. By 1950, he had landed a regular job at the Big Springs, Texas nightclub Ace of Club, where he developed a dedicated fan following. During a show there, Jim Beck, owner of a Dallas recording studio, was starting to take notice of Frizzell. Beck had deals with several major recording producing labels and maintained connections with many publishers. Impressed with Frizzell's performance, he invited him to make a free demo at the studio. In April of 1950, he cut several demos of Frizzell singing his own songs, including If You've Got the Money, I've Got the Time, which Beck took to Nashville where he pitched it to little Jimmy Dickens, who disliked the song. However, Columbia record producer Don Law heard the cut and liked it. After hearing Lefty in concert, he signed the singer and recorded him for the first time. If You've Got the Money, I've Got the Time became a two-sided smash hit in 1950 upon its release. The B-side was the song Frizzell wrote to his grief-stricken wife from jail, I Love You a Thousand Ways. The songs launched him into stardom, and within two years, he had gone to register 13 top 10 country hits. By 1951, he had perfected his vocal style and refined his guitar skills. 
He began working with a core group of Dallas-based studio musicians, including pianist Madge Sunty. At the beginning of 1951, he performed the Western Cherokees, led by Blackie Crawford, and soon they became his primary band for both live and recording sessions. Now, during his early career, Lefty was in the studio extensively, recording singles. His third, I Want to Be With You Always, was number one for 11 weeks. By mid-1951, Frizzell had become one of the only people that could be considered to match the popularity of Hank Williams. He had even toured with Williams. There is enough stories in that tour to fill a book, Frizzell once said although he never told those stories. He had three more top ten hits in 1951, Mom and Dad's Waltz, Traveling Blues, and the number one hit, Give Me More, More, More of Your Kisses. By 1952, he was a popular stage performer and in heavy demand, being included on the Grand Old Opry in the Louisiana Hayride multiple times throughout the 1950s. The hits continued throughout 1952 with How Long Will It Take to Stop Loving You, Don't Stay Away Till Love Grows Cold, Forever and Always, and I'm an Old Old Man Trying to Live While I Can. Despite his massive success, things began to get worse for Frizzell. He fired his manager and band and joined the Grand Old Opry. However, he quit very soon after. Even though he was earning a lot of money, he was spending almost all of it. He began to work with Wayne Rainey, but the sessions were considered a failure. Now, he had an automobile accident in 1952 and moved to Los Angeles in early 1953 and earned a spot on the town hall party. His songs began to chart worse, only having one song enter the top ten that year and in early 1954, he reached the top ten for the last time in five years. In 1954, Frizzell had another automobile accident near E.S. Richardson Elementary School in Midden in Webter Parish, Louisiana, through which he passed after leaving the Louisiana Hayride in Shreveport en route to a concert in Mississippi. His Cadillac struck the Nash station wagon, parked at the home of its owner, R. Harmon Drew Sr., the former city judge and later a member of the Louisiana House of Representatives. Frizzell apologized, said that he hoped to visit Midden again under more favorable circumstances, posted bond, and took a taxicab back to Shreveport, from which he flew to his destination. Having had few hits in the middle-late 1950s, he felt burnt out and had little energy for his career. He became frustrated that Columbia Records did not release what he thought to be his best material, so he stopped writing and recording songs. He toured extensively, however. Deciding on change, he began to work at Nashville's Cedarwood Publishing Company in 1959 with Jim Denny. Frizzell's first top ten hit in years came with The Long Black Veil in mid-1959. He moved to Nashville in 1960 after the town hall party closed and began touring and recording more and more, scoring some minor hits. Lefty's last big hit came in 1964 with the number one hit Saginaw, Michigan, and earned him a Grammy nomination. The next year, She's Gone, 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 was his last top 20 hit. Frizzell began a downward spiral after developing a debilitating alcohol problem. He recorded many songs, but Columbia released very few. Because of his declining record sales, he began to perform less. In 1968, he recorded with June Stearns as Agnes and Orville. In early 1972, he left Columbia Records and signed with ABC Records. He eventually developed chronic hypertension. His appearance changed drastically, and his voice had deteriorated. 
In 1972, Frizzell was inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame, and his song, If You've Got the Money, I've Got the Time, earned him the Grammy Hall of Fame Award. On July 19, 1975, at age 47, Frizzell died of a massive stroke and was buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Gardens in Goodlettsville, Tennessee. Frizzell was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in October of 1982. Okay, that's the end of our video. I sure hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of video and want us to keep producing them, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching.